so for the next two days we are doing a tour of Halong Bay. So here we are aboard our ship, our lovely home at sea. So we're going to give you a tour of the place. Lounging on the deck. How are you enjoying the views? Yeah, okay. <laughs> We've been doing lots of activities while we've been at Halong Bay. There's been kayaking and exploring caves. And this morning we're spending a bit of time at a private beach. Okay, so Sam, you are revisiting Halong Bay for the second time, yes? Indeed I am. Okay, so tell us, what's been your favorite part this time around and how has it changed? Well, it actually hasn't changed too much. This tour is quite similar to the one I did before. Uh, previously, I did a three-day tour. This time, we're doing a two-day. Two days, I think, is plenty. We've done a lot of different fun activities. I've just enjoyed being on the boat, all the gorgeous scenery, the mountains, the Karst Mountain. Well, this has been my first time to Halong Bay, so obviously what has impressed me the most is the scenery because it just looks out of this world. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. So I've really enjoyed just hanging out on the top deck, reading a book, checking out the views, and also the food aboard has been really nice. to show you our room on the boat. So, hello. Hello. Cabin fever. <laughs> okay, we've been here maybe half an hour. It's already messy. Hey. I blame it on this person. No. Here we are, just biking through the streets of Hoi An. Hello. So here we have our little ticket for sightseeing around Hoi An. And the way it works is that you pay $6 and you get a ticket that grants you access into five different historic sites around town. And you just show up at the entrance, they snip off one of these little tabs and that's good to how go. it works. You're good to go. At the Japanese cover bridge. It was built in 1593. So construction on this bridge began on the year of the monkey and it finished on the year of the dog and for that reason one side of the bridge is guarded by a monkey and the other by a dog. popular pedestrian bridge in town. Standing 
here at a small square and this is where a lot of fabulous performances take place, especially at night time. Kuangchu Assembly Hall, it's a place of worship for the Cantonese community. Up next, we are visiting the Assembly Hall of the Fujian Chinese. This place now acts as a temple to the goddess Tian Hao, who is from the Fujian province in China. So today we are doing something that I've been wanting to do ever since we got to Hoi An, and that is shopping. There are said to be over 200 different tailors just in Hoi An alone. This is a city where you come to have your clothes custom made. You can get dresses, shirts, suits, shoes, purses, anything made. And they can copy the latest designs. You just have to show them a magazine with what you want and they'll recreate it for you. Shopping for clothes, especially dresses, this is not my realm of expertise. Nice. <laughs> having fun changing over there. Um, having trouble. <laughs> Putting into my dress. Ooh, it looks nice. You like it? <laughs> you yeah, it feels like the rest. Yeah, I like to have more like a little smaller. It's number two. And how do you like this one? Nice. My color. It's got the flowers. Yeah. It's nice. I like it. I can do a little smaller. Yeah, a little smaller in the yeah, back. So you can make smaller? Yeah, I oh, can. Good. Well, 
fix size for you. Yes. You like it? I do. Yes, you like all three of them? A little small. Uh, we stay here two more days. Two more days. Yes. So what are we having done right now? Getting my dresses made so that they fit me properly. Where are you going now, uh, Mo? After here, we go to Hanoi. Very far away. So we're just waiting here for Audrey's dresses to get some minor alterations done on them. I think they're a little bit too big. They were a little too big on me, but I'm so excited for them to be pretty. So I'm quite pleased with my purchases. I ended up getting three dresses and I probably could have gotten more because the lady just kept pushing me, try this one, try that one. Well, she really wanted to get that fourth dress. Oh yeah, but we had to cut it off at three. So overall we paid $18 per dress plus a slight discount and that included alterations and everything. So a little tip for anyone who's thinking of going shopping in Hoi An, I would say just walk around the different streets, see what the shops have to offer see what styles you like, and then go into a store and don't be afraid to bargain a little and ask for different patterns, different fabrics, they can make anything you want. Today we are biking out to Tra Kue, it's a little village. We're going for a special organic meal at a restaurant that grows its own vegetables and herbs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sam on the water wheel. Water wheel. You're a natural. I don't know what it is. You should move out here and take up farming. So this place is amazing. It's like a little organic oasis where they just grow different herbs and vegetables. Everyone is farming. It's so peaceful and quiet. And it's beautiful. Like, look at all the flowers around us. So we have a very special drink here. It's called the water wheel drink. Lemon basil seed and ginger. Mmm, let's take a sip of that. Mm. Tastes very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way or a bad way? In a pretty good way. Okay. <laughs> Kuei is a small farming community village located two kilometers northeast of the ancient Hoi An town area. So we've just come here for dinner, but if you decide to visit this village, you can also work with the farmers for the day. You can take a rice paper making class, or you can take a cooking class. So if you've been following along with our recent food videos, you've probably noticed we've been having these pancakes a lot and they are delicious. I have to say that the presentation of these ones down here, these look the best. Mm -mm -mm. So these here are the best country pancakes we've had. What I really like about them is they're not as oily or greasy as the other ones. They have a little bit of a fluffier texture. So 
this lovely presented dish is called three friends and there are three friends right in my hand we have shrimp pork and vegetables wrapped around mmm pop it in your mouth friendly <laughs> some good pals in my mouth <laughs> These tres amigos are almost too pretty to eat. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <Easy. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here we have our colorful papaya salad and I didn't realize it was going to be this big. I'm starting to think we ordered way too much food. Are you kidding me? With me here? Too yeah. much food? Uh -huh. I'll take care of that. Well, to sum up this meal, I can honestly say this is the best dinner I've had since I've been in Vietnam. Absolutely love the dishes. You could just taste the freshness in every single dish we had. The prices were really affordable, the portions were generous, it was cooked really healthy, nothing was greasy or too oily, just absolute delight to come here and eat. I definitely agree, I think the long bike ride out here it was definitely worth it, and it's nice eating in such a quiet, peaceful setting, just being surrounded by the farms, so highly recommend it if you're in Hoi An. We are on a little raft, just cruising down the Mekong Delta. <laughs> Loving the conical hat. Like your hat. I'm loving the hat. I need a hat of my own. Come on, we should be wearing this back in Canada. What's wrong with people? Traffic jam over here. Hello. 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 Delta and this is day number one and we just started off by sampling some tea with honey and a few little snacks and now we're doing a little paddle boat uh, adventure down the Mekong. Today we're in Saigon, one of the most hectic and chaotic cities in Southeast Asia and we're going to show you the main attractions. And the best souvenir to take back home, weasel coffee. So that's coffee that's been pooped out of a weasel, in case you were wondering. Looks a little bit like an O. Henry bar. So there's a lot of exotic things you can buy in Vietnam. Snake wine. Snake wine. Here we go. We also have some very cool chocolates over here in the shape of conical hats. 
or you can get your own durian. durian Tasty. Our first stop today is the War Remnants Museum in Saigon. This museum chronicles the war from the perspective of the north side. So we just finished visiting the War Remnants Museum and inside it's divided into several galleries. I would say that the most impacting gallery is the one that focuses on the results of Agent Orange. And Agent Orange was a defoliant he used to get rid of the leaves in the jungle so that it would make warfare easier. But the thing is that the toxins affected people decades later. So someone who had been exposed to the toxins when they were 12 years old when they had children at 25, most of those kids were born with deformities and like thousands of people in Vietnam are affected by this. We're here at Tin Hao Temple dedicated to the goddess of the sea. So many years ago, this is where people would have come to pray for protection before a long sea journey. Over here they're burning the used incense sticks. Spiral cones that you see burning up there are actually incense sticks and they burn for three months. So if a family wants to have good luck, they come to the temple, they write their name and their date of birth on a little ribbon and that's attached to the incense stick and it just burns there for three months and you're lucky the whole time. Next up, it's time to go shopping at the Bin Tay Market. Let's see what we can buy. The market is a bustling hive of activity. You can buy just about anything here. We have some very forceful saleswomen over here. One lady grabbed onto my arm and I was pulling and she would not let go of me because I wouldn't buy a silk scarf. We're now visiting the Reunification Palace. This used to be the presidential palace for South Vietnam and it is stuck in a time warp. It has been left to look exactly the way it did when the North stormed through on April 1975. This is the Notre Dame Cathedral in Saigon and it's a very easy landmark to notice because it's made out of red brick. And if you happen to be here at the right time, you can even join Mass. last stop of the day we are visiting the general post office in Saigon and normally a post office wouldn't be a main attraction but this one was designed by Gustave Eiffel the same guy who built the Eiffel Tower the old phone booths have been turned into ATM machine stations
Although it is a main tourist attraction, it still does function as a post office. And that concludes our grand tour of Saigon. We hope you enjoyed it. Our time in Saigon is over. We're now taking a train to Nachong for beach time. Yes. And that's gonna make one of us very happy. Who would that be? Oh yeah. I just love the beaches. You want some more freckles? I do. I need them. I don't have enough. So we have been eating local foods the whole time. We have been here. Check that out. That is so Vietnamese. What is that? <laughs> I think they might call that pizza. Oh, ice cafe. thousand dong for that which is about 75 cents and oh is it ever good it's made with condensed milk and has copious amounts of sugar big sip better than ice caps on Tim Hortons back home yeah okay aside from the ice cap I think we need to discuss Sam's new look over here Pretty obvious change, right? What? What is that? Ooh, what is that? That's my little mustache. It's awesome. You love it. Throwback from the seventies. So there are two different classes in this train. We are traveling in the soft seat section, which has AC and really cushiony chairs. Then you also have hard benches with fans. Yeah, big difference. I'm glad we got these ones. Yeah. It's a lot more comfortable. We be having chicken for breakfast. One of my favorite snacks of all, fried spring rolls. And I get to eat them on the train. Paddling down 
the Hello Bay. Oh yeah. Look at you paddle. I know, I'm doing all the work and Sam's just there for the ride. Exactly. You paddle girl, you go. Oh. <laughs> coolest things out here by far are the floating villages. We survived our kayaking experience in Halong Bay. Almost crashed into the cliff. Yes. It was kind of scary. It's a bit stressful. Especially because whenever the big boats, the junks go past, they create these little waves. And like kayak is And you have to get out of the way of the junk too. That's a bit yeah. stressful. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. Yeah. It was a fun way to see the bay. We are eating lunch at the Bayo Well in Hoi An. And this is a very small local restaurant. They have a fixed menu. Actually, there is no menu. They just bring you food and you pay a fixed price and you eat as much as you want. And their focus is country pancakes and spring rolls. Which we both love. Yep. Put the salad in. Cucumber. Cucumber? Yeah. Right? And cheese. And spring roll. And oh, a spring wow. roll. Oh, that's yeah. going to be a crunchy. And chili bop. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, but banana leaf. Uh huh. Yeah. Now that is a special roll. That's got a meat. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Yes, yeah. we make like this. Nice. Excellent. So I did it here? Yeah, it is yeah. here also. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Give it a try, Audrey. Should we? Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. How was that? Mm hmm. <laughs> wow. Hard to bite, huh? <laughs> so you're going to what? Well, Sam here wasn't paying attention to the whole assembly process, so I will have to demonstrate how to roll a spring roll. Okay, so we add a little bit of greens, some lettuce. Oops. A little Put fumbling with the chopsticks there. Hey, here. hey, hey, don't be hating. Some greens, well, maybe some of this. This looks good. Yeah. Okay. Then she said this is our kimchi, which looks a bit different from the kimchi we eat in Korea. It's a Vietnamese style kimchi. Yeah. So let's add it some. Must of be pickled that. vegetables. Yeah. Then she added a spring roll. And oh, don't forget the meat. The meat. Let's try this one. Let's try a smaller one. Yeah. I don't know if it's chicken or beef, but looks good. It smells good. Now that is a super loaded roll. Okay. Now tightly. Uh, voila! This is kind of it. <laughs> and now you Good add enough. just a little bit of chili to the sauce. It's kind of a peanut based sauce, I think. Yeah. And we dip and enjoy. Oh, there comes more food. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Here's the country pancakes. Thank you. Yum. Yeah.
Okay, food monster. So this delectable roll, this time instead of the spring roll, it has the country pancake inside of it. Mm. So we're gonna give a try to that one. Oh. How does it taste? Is that better? These rolls are amazing. You got pancakes, the spring rolls, the, the greens, the skewered sake. All in this. <laughs> Happy boy. And if that feast was enough, we've got a little sweet treat to end off with. Ooh, what flavor did you get? I got cherry. Mm. Mm. And the dessert just keeps on coming. Now we have pineapple. Fresh pineapple. Oh, wow. Do you have any room for that? No. Well, I'll eat it. Okay, seriously, that was the feast of feasts. Normally country pancakes or spring rolls or satay taste great on their own, but all wrapped up together in one big roll dipped into a peanut sauce? Wow! Our lunch came to 180,000 dong, which is about $9. I think that's a great price because they just kept bringing out plates and plates of food and we were stuffed and then they were offering us dessert and it was like, oh, I don't want to turn it down. I guess I'll eat it anyway. So yeah, great selection there. The service there is really friendly, almost in a very unique kind of way. There was one time where the lady was coming over and she looked like it appeared she was going to be wrapping up a roll for us, but instead she just grabbed a satay and plopped it right in Audrey's mouth. And at the very end of the meal, she came over and noticed I was looking hot. She undid a napkin for me. I thought she was going to put it in my hands. Oh no, she just came and rubbed my whole face right down. <laughs> but yeah. So today we are setting out on a two-day hike through Safa. And we are just walking through the town. We've picked up a few more people who are joining us. And we've already picked up some, some local buddies who will be walking with us, it seems. What's your name? is going to be divided into three sections and the first village that we will be visiting is called Lao Chai. That's about eight kilometers from where we started out and we're two kilometers into the trek so far. It's getting really hot and I'm sweaty so let's keep going. <laughs> Tell us about the scenery. The scenery here is stunning. Unbelievable. Everywhere we walk. There's been a bit of a landslide that's blocking the road into the town. <laughs> it's like... Hey. Hey. <laughs> I heard a waterfall down there. It turns out it's just a river. <laughs> Still impressive. 
So after several kilometers of hiking, we're finally <laughs> approaching the village of Lao Chai down below. So we are about to cross this bridge into town and it is not for those who have vertigo because there are no railings on this bridge. After two hours of hiking, we've reached our first destination point, Lao Chai Village. And it's time for lunch. And I'm pretty hungry. How about you? I am starving. I can't wait to get there fast enough. It's just over there where the bridge is. That's Lao Chai. Now we're going to show you a little bit of a Vietnamese musical performance. It was quite impressive. Yeah.
finished a very hot and sweaty ride through a floating market. There were small little vessels selling things like fresh fruit and ice cold coffee. So we sat there, enjoyed the scenery, and ate some food. They literally had the perfect strategy down. They just had us sitting there for like 15-20 minutes. We were sweating profusely and they were selling us cold drinks. They must have made a fortune. This morning has been one of the best ideas we've done since we've come to Hoi An. We've been treated to this market almost entirely to ourselves. We actually haven't noticed another foreigner here yet. Wow. chickens and ducks. That's not something you see in the supermarket every day. In tiny little cages. all kinds of exotic fruits that are associated with Southeast Asia such as papaya, mangosteen, rambutan, dragon fruit, it's all here. From a bird's eye view perspective it's just a sea of colorful hats. It's too bad we forgot to bring ours today. also happens to be a cooking school but it has more of a casual feel. Basically you choose two dishes from the menu and then you pay an additional two dollars and you get to go into the kitchen and cook it yourself. So that's what we'll be doing. And believe me when I say this, if I can do it, anyone can. So we're entering into the kitchen. Kitchen, we're gonna make and our cooking video. Audrey's up first. Oh, cool. I think you can put a 
<laughs> First like this? Yeah, you roll one time. Okay. And try and try to make it good. Try to okay. Yes, try so to make it tight. Yep, yeah. Yeah. yep. And then take both sides. The side and side okay. So we get the sides tucked yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. No, not too short. And, and then, then continue. We finish. Yeah, try to make it as tight. As tight as tight. possible. Yeah, a little bit There little. you go. Right. Right. Not so bad. Yeah, yeah not so bad. Not so bad. Not so bad. <laughs> you, you got to have so it's great, it's like we're getting a, an exclusive peek into the kitchen. And this is how we're making pho. Oh, <laughs> can I try? Yeah. Okay, take photo. About two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, okay. Yep. Ooh, ooh, and I'm, oh, whoops. Like that. There we go. I'm adding the Let's take them to the table and devour them. Okay. So here's the spring roll that Audrey personally rolled herself. No, I didn't. You rolled it. Oh, right. I <laughs> remember. Yeah. Let's see how it turned out. <laughs> mm. This is one of my favorite dishes at this restaurant. It's just such a nice fat spring roll. Okay. How is that far? Delicious. And prior to learning how to make this, I didn't realize how many different ingredients went into this dish. And you can really taste the flavors. Mm. Next up, we will be making a vegetable cow lao. So the cow lao noodles are made from the water used from an ancient well, and apparently it's quite secret. Okay. Unique noodles to Hoi An. It's, a, it's harder, like a yeah. crispy noodle. Yeah. Hmm. very last dish, the vegetable pancake, and it happens to be my favorite one. It's got a lot of multitasking going on. We've got the tofu simmering. We've got the noodles being steamed over here. And we've got the pancake mixture. Ready to be spread on the front. Fermented soybean sauce. Fermented soybean sauce, okay. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, so here is the finished product, and this is round two of our feast. And it was a fascinating experience getting to see how all of this food was made in the kitchen. Mm. So we're going to show you how to roll the country pancake in rice paper so that it's easy for dipping into the sauce. Big bite. Mm. Oh yeah. The pancake is nice and crispy. And the sauce is kind of sweet. It has a bit of a tomato ketchup base, I believe. But it's also spicy because we added all the chili. So it's a nice combination of flavors. How's the cow lao? Love it. What really stands out with the cow lao is the taste of the noodles. They're just really unique to this area and I love them. So the textures of the noodles, they're a little bit crispy and it almost tastes a little bit like they're undercooked. But that's what makes them quite unique. 
We just finished our cooking class at Green Moss and it was a little bit different from previous cooking classes we've taken. This one was a little bit less hands-on and more watch and learn, which is great because we got to watch a professional make it and the dishes turned out great. And yeah, everything was tasty. That's the first kind of cooking class where it's been more of a just a demonstration only that I've taken before and I really enjoyed it partly because I'm really slow at preparing food but the other reason was it was so hot in that kitchen I don't think I've ever sweated that much so you know I could barely handle being in there as long as I was so had I been preparing the food I may have passed out on the ground well our time in Vietnam has almost come to an end so we came to Sapa and all we really wanted was a room with a view but you know how things are you don't always get what you want so come take a look at her room it's just you know it's nothing special you know i really wanted to have a nice view but this is just kind of you know ordinary Meh. yeah kind of so blah. blah blah and how is it over there it's not any better come see Nah. 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 What's your office like these days? I'm enjoying it. Not so bad. No, who's kidding who? This is just absolutely stunning. This room here costs only $20 and we get a free breakfast. And I have to say, I've been traveling for a very long time. I've probably been backpacking almost three or four years. I've never had a room with a view like this. So off in the distance you can see the rice terraces where locals grow their crops and this view is actually kind of similar to the Bosong tea plantations that we visited in Korea and also the Cameron Highlands in Malaysia where we visited more tea plantations. The only difference, we didn't have a room overlooking this. Much better view this time around. in Vietnam has almost officially come to an end and I can't think of a better way to spend it than here in Sapa. What do you think? Vietnam has been our favorite country to travel through in the past three months and Sapa is just a great relaxing destination where to end off the trip. We are taking our first sleeper bus in Vietnam. We are traveling from Nha Trang all the way up to Hoi An, which should be about 12 hours. And the bus basically looks like they've stuffed a whole bunch of bunk beds in it. It runs off on. I love the look on Audrey's face when she first saw this bed. I've taken these sleeper buses before, but they are quite unusual buses. Okay, this is the tiniest bunk bed I have ever been on. I could fall off the side. Oh, come on, baby. you're gonna love it. It's like a sleepover party on a bus. <laughs> so, one of the many perks of traveling on the night bus is that you see the night's accommodation. We will be paying for a hotel or a guest house tonight. This is our hotel. Stop. So we paid about 11 US dollars for this journey, and that comes to less than one dollar per hour of travel. Bargain. Are you getting a good night's rest? Very liberal use of your board.
bus and we were still on the bus. We didn't really get a good night's sleep because they were just honking all night. So as soon as we get to Hoya, I'm getting my nap. <laughs>